Thanks for staying with us. Now, tensions are rising as the retirement date of Inspector General of Police Kayode Betokun approaches with uncertainty due to a recent amendment to the Police Act. The amendment passed by the National Assembly in July 2024 allows the President to extend the IGP's tenure beyond the mandatory retirement age, but it has not yet been signed into law by President Tinubu. Concerns have also been raised that extending Betokun's tenure could disrupt career progression within the police force and increase lobbying for positions. Our guest this morning is Okechuku Wanguma, Executive Director, Rule of Law and Accountability Center, RULAC. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, and it's my pleasure to be on this program. Mm. Wanguma, the son of Wanguma. Guma. Wanguma. Okay. Yes. Okay. I got it right now. Okay, so uh, Eberto Kuhn, um, if his tenor is prolonged, if it's extended, it will not be the first time. Uh, almost uh, the last how many presidents extended the time or the tenor of the uh, police chief. Now they wanted to make it into law and the, the, the law or the bill is on the table of the president waiting his assent. And this is now that people are crying. When the law came up, uh, nobody seemed to say anything, nobody seemed to, to think uh, so much about it, but now the, there's this hue and cry that it is going to uh, disrupt career progression. Put us uh, through how that is supposed to um, retard or disrupt the career progression and the dangers uh, thereon if this tenor is extended. Thank you very much. Uh, like you rightly mentioned, the practice of extending the tenure of uh, IGPs um, is not new. Um, under President Buhari, we had two uh, Inspector General of Police, um, um, uh, Mohamed uh, Adamu, and uh, after him, Baba Akali. You know, uh, the, the under President Buhari, their tenures were extended. And those extensions we are met with outstanding, you know, rejection and uh, public outcry, including litigation. In fact, in the case of Adamu, the Nigerian Bar Association, under um, the past two presidents, you know, and went to court to challenge the extension for being illegal and unconstitutional. And so um, we thought that this practice, which has always, which had always provoked public outcry and, and rejection would end under President uh, um, um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who, as we see, obviously, is moving towards extending the tenure of the current IGP, who is supposed to leave, retire by September 4, having, att or having attended, he will be attending the age of 60 by September 4. And by now, he ought to have proceeded on pre-retirement uh, leave. Now, the, both the Constitution and the Police Act 2020 are very clear about the procedure for the appointment of Inspector General of Police. The power to appoint the Inspector General of Police is given to the President, but of course he has to do it in consultation with the Police Council and there are other conditions, one of which is that a person to be appointed must be a police officer who is not less than, who is not less than uh, uh, the rank of an assistant inspector general of police, AIG, and that the president must convene the police council and get the advice of the police council. And of course, the procedure for removal is also, um, um, it also requires some level of um, involvement by the National Assembly. You know, the president cannot just remove the IG once appointed unless with, he secures the approval of the third majority of members of the National Assembly. But what we find over the years is that presidents single-handedly appoint and can fire the IGP and can even extend the tenure. There is no provision for tenure in both the Constitution and the Police Act. Now, in this particular case, what we saw was that the bill to amend the Police Act emanated from the president himself. Uh, it's, uh, it's, called, it's an executive bill that was 
sent to the National Assembly by the President seeking an amendment to um, alter Section 88A by adding another clause. 88B, which will which says simply says that a person to appointed IGP will serve a period of four years. Of course, as provided by the police act, four years is the period provided, which ensures security of territory. But this new bill tries to insert a clause which says that the person shall serve uh, the term specified in his appointment letter. And it is very clear to us that this is the president pursuing um, an amendment that will serve the interests of uh, an individual. Um, the speed with which the National Assembly considered and passed this amendment bill, you know, beats imagination. It is unprecedented. Um, it was introduced, and on the same day, it passed through first reading, second reading, and third reading, and then was passed without a public hearing, which is a breach of democratic process, which is a breach of due pro process, which means that he didn't mass. consider the need. He didn't consider the need for public scrutiny, public participation in the process. And public yeah, but you know, just a minute, just a minute. It's, um, you've talked about the fact that that bill was seeking to amend that portion so that the person serves the term in their appointment letter. Why appoint someone and give him a tenure and then go ahead and remove him because he has, you know, he has reached the age or something? Why not put that, that tenure according to how much he's going to stay? So if he has only two years, you say he's going to serve for only two years. Why give him four years knowing that he's going to retire maybe before the four years? Is that not a breach of contract as well? I'm just saying, that, because you, you deal with the rule of law. Yes, I, I think that the, the issue is very clear. There is no, there's no confusion, there's no ambiguity. The confusion and ambiguity have been introduced by the procedure adopted by the President and the National Assembly. First of all, both the, the Police Act 2020 provides a tenure of four years yeah. for the person to be appointed Inspector General of Police. Mm. Now, what that's we ought this you know what that you know requires is that we, the implication is that a person to be appointed should have up to four years left in to serve in before retirement from the Nigeria police. Yeah. But even if the person does not have up to four years, the civil service rule which applies to the police requires that upon attainment of the age of sixty or uh, length of service of 35 years, the person should retire. Now, Ebetoku is going to attend 60 by September 4. If, even, if he, he, even if he was appointed for a period of four years, but even the police act itself makes reference to the public, it's a subject to the public service rule. The police act itself says tenure of four years, subject to the public service rule, which means that the public service rule takes upper hand. So what, what it means is that even if, even though the police act prescribes a, a, a tenure of four years, but upon attainment of the age of retirement under the public service, the person should leave. That is simply what it is. So any attempt to extend is unconstitutional, it is illegal, and it is, it is open to suspicion for, you know, uh, for being done for political or personal reasons. So this uh, position of IGP, would you describe it as political or is a career progression? It, you see, the thing is, the, it has been politicized, but it is not a political position because it, it, there is a, pro, a process. If you look at the process for the appointment, you know that it is it ought to be guided by certain requirements. The person has to be a, a serving officer, not less than you know the rank of AIG. And the president has to consult with the police council. The police council is composed of the president, the governors of all the states, the chairman of the police service commission, and the serving inspector general of police. But what happens is that over the years, presidents don't summon the police council. They just can pick. And it is this 
this practice of single-handedly single have picking and appointing a preferred candidate. We have seen situations in the past where former presidents had to fast track the promotion of a commission of police in order to bring him up to the rank of AIG to qualify for appointment and then goes ahead to, to appoint him. The implication is that all the people of his rank and his seniors who, who still have some years left are forced to retire for compulsory. So we lose personnel who have been, who have been, you know, personnel who have been trained, uh, you know, and then we, who are with the institutional memory of the institution. So this is a practice that, and the fact that courts in the past have ruled that extension is illegal should have settled this matter. It is wrong for the president to continue to go the way he is going. But who are the people really crying that this is not right? Who are those crying foul? Because you said this uh, uh, police body that should be consulted comprised of the IGP himself, the 36 state governors, and maybe the FCT minister, I don't know if he's also the, the chairman qualified. Of the police and the chairman, chairman of the police, police service commission. Uh, all these people, are they crying that this thing is not supposed to be? Because if they are not complaining about it, which means they give their not. Whether they give their nod by really nodding or just keeping silent, they give their nod. So all the people that are crying, or rather, how effective is this body that was supposed to be consulted if they are giving the nod to something that every other person is complaining about? I, I think it's simply a case of abdication, abdic abdication of res responsibility. Over the years, this issue has come up again and again about the needs for the it is, it is the duty of the president to summon or to convene the police council. But he never does that. And unfortunately, even the state governors who have a role to play, because the, 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 the duty of the police council are, is basically a policy, you know, um, constitutional body to advise the president on the appointment of the IGP when there is a vacancy and to advise him generally on the state of insecurity across the, the country. You would expect that, given the state of security in this country and the controversy that continues to trail appointment or removal of IDPs, that the police council, the, the members of the police council, which include, of course, the, the chairman of the police Salvation, service commission is an appointee of the president, the Inspector general of police is an appointee of the president, the governors, many of them don't want to, you know, um, uh, offend the president, so you, they, they continue to keep quiet rather than really insist on contributing to making their, playing their own part in this process of appointment. So it's a case of abdication of responsibility rather than consent. And, and this is why it has always generated controversy as it is now. Now, the, the, you, you would notice that within the Nigerian police force, there is, there is, it, it has created a, a, a lot of you know, it has created unsettlement. That there is a high level of discontent within, because what it, it, the implication is that those who ought to rise in their career are stunted, because the people who ought to leave and give way for others to rise remain. And by the way, if if if, if the president ends up retaining uh, all his seniors, or rather, or rather all his mates who, who, who ought to go with him, will still go. And he will remain alone. And then those other people who, who should take turn to become IGP are denied the opportunity. This is unfair. It creates indiscipline. It is it is it creates disloyalty within the it, within the Nigerian police force. And this is not for our police. It's not for security. It's not for our democracy. Okay. So uh, in a nutshell, the way forward is do not extend the the tenure the of president, the president. The president should not sign. That the, in fact, the process of amending that bill is itself faulty, and the president should not should not endorse illegality. He should not sign. It. He should. Everybody who should commence on leave, and the pro process of appointing a new IGP should commence immediately. 
Do you think this is something that will work or it's just a prayer that it may work it, that it the is, president should not work. sign? Because I see it in the work. constitution of Nigeria, when you're talking about the functions of a president and what he can do, uh, not just the president but an elected official, you're not expected to hold any other position. That's according to the constitution, which is the grand norm of our, of our country. But we find that for the past how many years, how many tenors, how many governments have come, and they are the ministers of, uh, for petroleum, for instance. Even this present administration will only have a minister of state for petroleum while the president sits there, and nobody's complaining. Do you think it can work, or are there other measures we can use to appeal to the government if they have decided on something for them to go back on them? I'm not talking about some of the policies that have been brought that we know already that they know people will not accept it, and then they will draw back and say, ah, they are a listening government. But I'm talking about sensitive ones like this one that you have brought. Do you think I just think the I, cry we are crying now will work or that other things we can do to make sure we hold their hand from signing? You, you, know, you know, like I, I earlier mentioned, in the past, similar actions had attracted legal challenge and outcry both within and outside the police. Now, the president needs to demonstrate his commitment, his genuine commitment to democratic ethos by not allowing this this will rather be an act of you see laws are not made to favor an individual laws are made in the public interest and going by the way this bill was passed it is clear that it's an agenda so you know an agenda that satisfies a personal or political interest the president should demonstrate his genuine commitment to democracy and the survival of our democracy but to, be fair, to, to be fair, okay, to, cool. to be fair, uh, how does police IGP influence any political decision and all that? How, how does he help the president in his political uh, agenda? In, in, you know that you know that uh, the office of the Inspector General of Police is a powerful office, yeah. and that is why every president wants to decide determine who becomes the IGP, somebody that can help him. You know, for example, during elections, doing certain things, when you want to target political opponents, when you want to rig elections using the police, if you have an IGP who is not going to cooperate with you, you're not likely going to uh, you know, achieve that. So that is why they single-handedly impeach. And then, so if, if you know that this current IGP was the um, um, ADC to the, the, the president when he was governor of Lagos State. So they have a relationship, and he feels comfortable with him. So this amendment of the Police Act, to extend his tenure, is done just to, you know, favor him and to retain him in office for the interest, for the political interest of the president. I, I, think, I think the president can and, always and, get anybody to do his bidding. I, if you ask me, greed has no ethnicity. Greed has nothing to do with uh, who you are. Anybody can be bought if they are greedy. So whether you're from you, the are, north are, or the are, south. Are you aware of how Abba Suleiman was removed by President Jonathan? By a tweet. Because uh, that was, you know, when, when it became clear that President Buhari, or Buhari was winning the 2015 election. Suleiman was the, the historian general of police. President Jonathan had given him a directive and he believing that you know his loyalty was to he, he, he behaved in a certain way that clearly showed his, where his loyalty lies. And that was why by a tweet President Jonathan announced his, his removal. So these things happen, you know. It's about politics and I think that security is too sensitive a thing to be reduced to politics, to be politicized. The, the procedure for the appointment is should be competitive, transparent, and merit-driven to ensure that the best hand, a professional police officer, is appointed as a special of police. Who, policing is critical to the sustenance of democracy. We cannot allow politics to influence who, who becomes IGP. It is not a political office. It is a professional calling. Well, it's unfortunate, and uh, well, I do hope we'll get to that point where we don't have to have the influence of the the president on appointment of judicial officers, uh, the president you know, appointment of uh, uh, police officers, and all the all the sensitive positions. It should just work according to 
how the 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 profession dictates so the next mm -hmm. best person just goes and takes it but now uh, we see a situation where even when there is pronouncement of judgments in the court where people clap for the president that you either did not influence it or you influenced it positively and i just laugh and say well, why should it be that we are even clapping that we know that somebody maybe a governor or a president is supposed to meddle into those affairs but he chose not to do that at least not to the extent that we know and then we are clapping we are the ones just handing ourselves over to whoever yeah. is at the helm of affairs but well let's okay. hope for better nigeria but this is where we have to wrap up uh okay chuku uh, we'd like to thank you so much for joining us today and uh putting more light to this topic which we have already discussed uh, yesterday thank you for coming thank you thank you for pleasure. Yeah.